and work as a facilitator and design solutions for the private sector. Fumbiri now is designing two state compensation funds in Paraná and Rondonia via the states in light green in the map. And we have negotiations to design four of the funds in Amazonas, Pará, Espírito Santo, Rio Grande do Norte. What we have with one state, I know it's a very rich state of Rio, we have $108 million. You can only imagine what we could do for the protected areas in Brazil if we manage to design other state funds. So that's it. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Yoko Watanabe. I'm a program manager and senior biodiversity specialist at the Global Environment Facility, the GEF. Uh, I'm delighted to be here today to share our experience um, supporting more than 44 um, conservation trust funds over the 20 years of our history and giving a little bit of a donor perspective on how we've been working on it and what our lessons learned and where we're going. Um, I'll try to make my, I, I am going to make my presentation short that um, you'll have some more time to discuss and um, have um, a Q&A session. Okay, so I really don't think with this audience I need to talk much about GEF, but as you may know, um, the GEF is a financial mechanism for the um, major conventions like the Convention on Biodiversity, Convention on Climate Change, and uh, Combating Desertification and all. So, thank you. And biodiversity is one of the largest uh, program in GEF, um, as uh, sharing one one third of our resources with climate change and all the others. Um, so, over the history of twenty years of existence. Um, we have been working mainly on two areas, one on protected areas and another one outside of the protected area, mainstreaming biodiversity and production landscapes. And we also have mandate to work on the biosafety issue, ABS, and also all the obligations under the CBD like NBSAPs and uh, other national reporting. And during do, while doing these work, one of the key um, elements or um, our focus is, as, our, as my CEO yesterday in our um, workshop mentioned, innovation has been one of the key areas that we are focusing on. We, want to, we are ready to take risks and do new things. And hopefully others would you know, uh, scale up and follow up and work together. So that's the model that we have been built up. And I must say, the Conservation Trust Fund is one of that really uh, you know, clear cases of innovation that we started with really few you know, experience and no other almost donors were there in the beginning. But now, you know, as you can see here, um, there are so much partners in working together and I think this is a real case that we can really showcase in our program. Okay, so I'll skip through this saying that uh, we have invested our, our key initiative within the biodiversity still remains in productive area management. I would say um, 60 to 70 percent of our resources have gone to productive area systems, um, 2.2 billion and 5.5 billion were le leveraged over the past 20 years. We have invested more on close to 3,000 productive areas, 708 million hectares, and conserved um, more than 700 threatened species within these productive areas. So within the program of protected area management, the key element that we're focusing on is in increased financing of protected area system and improve the sustainability of these protected area system. Early in our history in GF, we also supported single protected area management um, in many of the countries. And what we realize is unless there is a sustainable financial mechanism inbuilt in the system, Many of these projects fail and um, wouldn't be uh, 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 prolonged and sustainable in the long run. So that's really a key element among these four areas that we work on. Um, but at the same time, I really have to emphasize that Conservation Trust Fund is, is one of the sustainable financing mechanisms that we focus on. As many of you have been working and we 
talked about it earlier in the presentation. Um, we also um, innovated on the payment for ecosystem services project, first in Costa Rica and Mexico and other countries. Um, we have worked together with other bilaterals on debt for nature swaps. Um, tax incentives are another way, and there are other, you know, mechanism and incentive like offsets and all the other mechanism that we're working on. So with these sort of diversity of uh, sort of uh, menus for um, sustainable financing, we're really trying to, you know, utilize our lessons and really come up with more newer mechanism and newer um, approaches as well. Um, so in terms of conservation trust fund, um, as I mentioned, we're a pioneer and one of the largest supporters for conservation trust fund. And um, we have invested in more than $300 million in total. And as the earliest count that I have done, we have invested in more than 44 conservation trust funds, um, 17 in Africa, 13 in Latin America, and 14 in Asia and Europe combined. It's quite amazing that now Africa actually surpassed uh, Latin America because early in our portfolio, it was all Latin America, I must say. So this really shows that how much Africa has come up in, in supporting this and utilizing the mechanism to ensure sustainable financing. And the Red Black, of course, and CAFE and all the others have been really um, pioneering and um, building up the capacity that way as well. So this is uh, sort of the um, really exciting that we, we have been also having South-South cooperation, the lead lack um, uh, with some of the earlier projects like Profanante or Fumbio, which was one of the first conservation trust funds that we have supported, is now you know, working with the Madagascar Fund, which is one of the newer um, uh, trust fund that we are supporting. So we really uh, look at this dynamics as a really positive side of our contribution. So the lessons learned, some of the lessons learned that we have um, recognized during over the years. And I must say, we are also trying to really do a little bit more study and review of all the 44 um, conservation trust funds that we have been supporting in the past and really draw lessons. But this is more of a quick review that uh, we have looked into. First, we think that the country ownership is a really important part. I, I would say country, not only government. A country includes NGOs, other partners in this uh, matter. So in countries where there weren't that you know, sort of ownership to have the conservation trust fund, some of them have failed. And um, it's not included in the 44. We actually try to support some, but uh, some have failed without, you know, um, some champions in the countries. Also, our focus on um, protected area system. Um, we also supported park trust funds in the past, but um, now um, we have recognized that um, it is more efficient and effective working on the system level. Um, also, the partnership and co-financing side. We're really excited working together with FFN um, as well as uh, the Germans, the French governments, and all the others. And I think this leverage impact is really a significant part of our um, um, collaborating work rather than doing single piece, you know, protected area management in the country. We also have changed our role itself over the years. Um, in the beginning, we were almost like a seed fund. And now I think it's more of a knowledge management sharing um, also providing you know, experience from the different um, trust funds that we have worked on. Also the use of appropriate modality. Um, in the beginning it was more, more I, I would say all of them were endowment fund. Um, more and more um, thinking fund and mixed funds are coming up. Um, I thought it's too early to say what is more efficient or you know, what is the criteria in selecting these elements. Uh, different modality, but it, it is a dynamism that we're seeing that uh, different modality works in different countries' situation. Um, also innovation. Um, in the beginning it was purely a conservation trust fund, but these mechanisms are now being used like the FUMBIO and others were mentioning that the payment for ecosystem service or the offset mechanism is utilizing the, the already existing conservation trust fund to channel through the finance and distribute in effective manner. Um, monitoring impact at the program and project levels, um, it has much improved, but we also recognize that this is still a challenge. Um, compared to the project level 
uh, intervention in many cases, particularly in the early stages of conservation, conservation trust fund, the, the log frame or the indicators weren't very clear, particularly at the program level, at the fund level. So even the projects had really significant impact when it came to the overall aggregated results, it was rather difficult to show, okay, what impact may, did this fund make in the country level was not very easy. And I must say, it's a real big improvement in the past years, but uh, it would remain as something, as a um, challenge and something to look into. So the last slide here, um, I wanted to um, show that we continue to engage in and interested in innovative financial mechanism and Conservation Trust Fund remains as a key focus of our support. Um, at the same time, we also recognize that, you know, there are a lot of already existing Conservation Trust Funds and our focus is not to establish many newer ones, but also, you know, supporting to strengthen and make sure that some of the projected um, trust funds are, are strengthened. Um, one of the good examples is the Bhutan Trust Fund, which was the first one that we supported in our history and we recognize after 20 years we needed to rebump the whole management and we're working on a second phase of conservation trust fund support in Bhutan. Um, the new generation of CTFs is something that I already mentioned that the, the linkage with PES, the linkage with offset, this is something that is definitely coming up as a new generation of proposals towards us. And we continue to be quite excited to see how we can you know, utilize our earlier investment to do more newer, innovative things. And also, lastly, um, the, the, this could be a real mechanism for private sector involvement as well. That's what we think, and also you know, utilizing the market mechanism and really you know, trying to work with private sector. This is really, I think there is more potential to do that. We haven't tapped in enough on that, I think, and this is somewhere we want to really look into. So lastly, scaling up replication, knowledge management of these mechanisms is something that we are trying to strengthen further. And um, towards, you know, Jet 5, right now we're in Jet 5 and we're looking into further investment and these are something that we really want to look into. So thank you very much and uh, I look forward to the more further interaction. Thank you. Conservation, you know, and 
diminish the budget and just leave to the funds to finance, to finance everything, which was absolutely not the purpose of it. This is what we tried to, to demonstrate at the beginning. The, the, the idea is really to bring some additional uh, financing mechanism and to make them work together. But so far, what are already the, 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 the mechanism, the, the tools that you use to try to maintain this mix in an efficient way, to try to maximize the leverage of funding? Uh, I think uh, Yoko was also raising some, some questions. You know, um, uh, probably uh, th th there is. Uh, it's true that as we are we are demonstrating, uh, project have the advantage to have a clear log frame at the beginning with clear indicators of the delivery. Uh, we still have the usually they, they have invested quite, quite a lot in terms of demonstrating uh, or trying to demonstrate their impact. It's true that conservation trust funds still today are trying to establish, you know. Uh, best practices in demonstrating how they can themselves be able to demonstrate their impact in, in uh, biodiversity conservation and we are working with the uh, CFA and, uh, and Redline about that. Soon I'm sure we will start to, to, to have some ideas but you know it's really ongoing works. But then again uh, I'm not here to, to speak all the time. We are very much interested perhaps to get your feedback, your questions, perhaps the questions of clarification but pretty much about how you, you or you feel this difference between the, the different tools, what, what is very much important with project approach that was not really taken into account in this uh, presentations, what is very much important for you with conservation trust fund, or on the opposite, what is really a risk or a problem with uh, both of the, of, the different, uh, both of the different mechanisms. So, I don't know, Ray, if you want to say something more, uh, if I forgot something, but uh, the floor is open for questions or any reactions. Could you present yourself before, before to, to ask your Thank question? Thank you. Uh, my name is Willy Costco with the Micronesia Conservation Trust. Um, just a few comments and maybe end with a question. Or, um, I think in, in addition to what you presented, uh, some of the things that we're finding as, um, is that the, having the Micronesia Conservation Trust established has um, given higher visibility and uh, elevated the priority of conservation in the country uh, and in the region because when the GEF gave us $5.1 million, of course everybody started paying attention, the government, the local communities. So it's, it's actually in itself an education uh, and outreach uh, tool. Uh, the other uh, thing is that we've, we've actually done a sustainable financing plan for the whole region in relation to the Micronesia Challenge Initiative. Uh, and, and, and that even involves this uh, conservation trust, including the other things, the projects that are coming in, uh, and then the sustainable financing uh, that's being generated at the, at the national levels, uh, which include the, uh, one of them is the Palau uh, Protected Area Network fee, and that's brought in, uh, or bringing in over a million dollars in uh, tourism fee um, to the, uh, the work of the protected area uh, networks, which is a lot of money. Um, and then we also, uh, because we serve as a forum for dialogue uh, and a forum for innovation and uh, new ideas, and sort of really helped us to focus uh, the region in, in one direction. Uh, and that's uh, really one of the things that we uh, serve. And of course, the monitoring uh, and having the ability as a local organization who know the region to go out and work with the local uh, organizations, partners and grantees, uh, we've added that sort of uh, level that the donor themselves wouldn't be able to add. Um, I guess my the point I wanted to also add is that we've been requested by the local communities and from some other donors to also look into uh, being serving as a climate uh, financing tool. And I was wondering what others feel about this because the local uh, communities who are doing conservation work are finding that they can't separate uh, climate uh, change and the uh, effects of climate change and the adaptation measures that they're going to be doing uh, from the conservation work that they're doing. So they're already requesting for us to become, uh, you know, that tool also for them since we've already uh, in the past uh, 10 years we've shown 
the track record to do that. So I was just wondering what the feeling is about, you know, combining the two under one uh, organization that actually started as a CTO. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, yes. Uh, I don't know that as far as I understand, we don't have a, a moving micro. Yes, I think you will have to move up there. Yeah, yes, yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, can I just respond to, to the question real quick? Um, we did another study but, uh, about two years ago now with PricewaterhouseCoopers around the issue of using conservation trust funds for climate finance, specifically red finance. So I'm happy to give you or anybody else who wants a copy of it. It's a deep dive into six countries. Um, Micronesia was not one of the areas we studied. Uh, your fund didn't even really exist at the time. Um, so, but I'd be happy to share that. I think it is, it's, a, it's a little bit technical, but I think it, there's also a separate piece that provides a good overview. And, you know, and I'll just add, well, no, Frank, go ahead there, but just uh, to that point, you know, your fund, depending on your mission, if you can bring in different resources and, and combine those to get to results, it makes a lot of sense. There are a lot of funds that are investing right now in, in various types of carbon projects from, from red to, uh, to agroforestry, and that's, I think, an